And right. now you no longer have hot gas coming. So where, where's your source of hot gas? Ooh, we don't have any hot gas. Okay. Right. But you're also getting a little bit of boil off that's going on. Yeah. There. So to kind of maintain some of these things that maybe that they had to go into a venting procedure. And now, yeah. now that, that gets the changes later when we get the reentry. Hey, y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am with Dr. Scott Walter again, and we are going to talk um, Starship. <laughs> this is a very old model of a Starship I got. Oh, yeah, yeah you wait, I need to like make our view bigger so you can see. Oh, yeah, there we go. We okay, go. yeah. <laughs> got to make the like- Yeah, it won't fit in otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's too big. Anyway, this is an older version, but somebody was very kind to print it for me and give it to me. But uh, man, I guess I need to get your giant three-foot metallic version there. So uh, so we will go with props if we need to. We are going to talk about the IFT3 launch, which is what, something flight test. I can't remember what the, what the I stands In, for. I think integrated flight test. Integrated flight test. Thank you. That would be it. So there we go. So let us, uh, we'll start with the launch. We'll just go for it and see where we go. So, okay. So I've cut off the sound. Um, I will, of course, leave a link to the X post and the uh, SpaceX website where you can watch this entire thing. It is an hour and 43 minutes long. So it's, it's pretty hefty. So yeah. that's actually, well, let's start with that. Number one, it's good that the broadcast was so long because that means it basically almost did everything it was supposed to, right? So right, that's pretty cool. right. And yep. if you look at that, you see what we have is a giant frosty there. So yep. the humidity was pretty high down in Boca Chica and it was also pretty windy. It was about 30 kilometers or about 20 miles per hour. Yeah. And um, and so high humidity, I think in the 80s. And then with Ooh. everything, you know, the cold going in there, you're just going to create quite the frost line really quickly. So we can see it's almost right. filled to the brim there. Uh, and we can see which way the winds are blowing. And it's also quite the theatrical event there. A lot of the fog is probably being generated by SpaceX. And probably right. Uh, right. And unfortunately, because of, of the winds, I think a lot of the fog that was normally there sort of lifted and got blown out. And yeah. because of a few minor delays, I think there were a couple of boats in the range. Uh, they right. you know, ended up pushing it maybe a half hour uh, yeah. longer and, and later, which is good, which meant you get more light and um, the exactly. cloud deck started to open up. So right. Worked out to and, everyone's favorite. And also, uh, just a quick note: like previously, we've always seen it stop. The first two tests, it stopped at forty seconds for quite a period right. of time. This time, went right on through forty seconds, no Straight problem. Straight on through. Blew right. on through. So, so yep. they've, you know, the the tanking and everything that they've been doing, they they've cut that down now that they're very confident with it. And right. what I want everyone to do is that when this thing goes, look at the speed and how right. quickly it climbs right. up. Right up here. So when we get that initial launch, then I think it's at T minus right. so zero right now. I don't think it's starting yeah. to move yet. Actually, so I'm going to rewind up. just a little bit. Just watch the watch the light sequence of the engines lighting up. They yep. don't all light at the same time because otherwise but, it would probably blow the thing up. Yes, it would be yes. Too yes, much thrust but, all at once. But, but they do it in a, in a sort of pattern that you can see. So, right. And it, everything it, lights it, up it, quite well. You get the outer yeah. ring, and then finally the outer ring gets enough. Right. Now you've got enough thrust to get off. So Three, probably if the inner four, ones didn't go, you wouldn't five. want to do it. But then if you kind of look at it right there, once it, it crosses the tower, which is right about there, yeah. you're already past 100 kilometers per hour. Yeah, it's it's an insane. I mean, considering how big that rocket is, that is a crazy amount it's, of acceleration. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's accelerating. And you'll see it doesn't take very long and we're already a kilometer high. Yeah. So it just rip, like, goes on up there. It's just moving up, you know, taking off like a rocket. Now we know where yeah. the metaphor comes from because <laughs> that thing just was screaming on up and confidently. Right. Uh, you're not noticing it tipping over anything like that. It's just going straight. And now, yeah. because of the um, the ratios of the booster to the main stage and stuff like that, the booster is more about height than it is downrange. So yes. normally, like with the Falcon 9 and the others, you start doing the gravity turn very early, which means it right. takes a long time to climb up to the altitude. This thing is tending to, to, to stay straighter much longer. So right. that's why you're really seeing it climb an altitude very rapidly. The right. other thing we're seeing here, of course, you know, some great, uh, drone footage uh, showing Incredible you, but shots. also yeah. great onboard footage. Yeah, and also that, notice one thing I just noticed was, and sorry, the 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 playback bars in front of it, but look at the locks in the CH four. Like by the time it clears the tower, like it burns through a uses lot, a lot of yes. locks in CH four yes. before it ever clears. Like, anything. and that's an important thing to do. So you already have a lot of yeah. acceleration uh, jumping off the pad, and right. that's full thrust and with it fully loaded. And as it gets lighter and lighter, if they're not uh, pulling back on the thrust, it's accelerating more and more. And so right. that's why you see that thing just really going. At some point, I want to go through this thing to really figure out what the, the acceleration profile like, because it's pretty impressive that it got up there. It seemed like it hit a speed of around 1,000 kilometers per hour pretty darn quick. Right. And that, that means like you're, you're already 
up at the speed of sound in a short period of time. Yeah. So, man, it's just, it's just blowing past all those things uh, and getting right on up the hot staging. So yeah, you can, you're seeing it's consuming those levels rather rapidly to bring them right. down. And the hot staging and, goes perfectly. Yeah. And, and I think like, it's also important, like it's, it's right around here. It's passing the speed of sound, the sound barrier somewhere around a yep. thousand or 1100 kilometers yeah. an hour. So it's, it's moving through that really quickly, but yeah, it's. <laughs> that's Sooner what, than we usually see with a Falcon nine. It's, it's yeah. It's less than a minute. Yeah, yeah. Pretty crazy. <clears throat> so, I mean, the cool part about this is as opposed to the last, the first flight where like half the engine's were working and you know there was like all kinds of outages and stuff the the and, engines it wasn't engine rich or anything like that i mean you look no, at that exhaust no. it was perfect the, the plum, none, yeah. none of them went out they went out when they're supposed to you'll see this right. shutdown sequence goes the way it's supposed to as you get ready for the hot staging yeah. the hot staging happened so quick there was hardly anything to notice right yeah it was that was really impressive this time was it hot staged yeah. and moved on in just a second it moved uh, on and and then the boost back engines lit up so what they need to do is i think right. They start to drop the outer ring, then the inner ring shuts down. Then you just have three engines for the hot staging. Yeah. And so, so watch coming this up pretty soon. corner over here as it hot stages. It's a, it's almost three minutes, so like two minutes and forty five seconds, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but also, it's it's you know it's already twenty six hundred kilometers an hour and twenty nine kilometers in the air, so it is yeah. getting out of there fast. Which which Elon has talked about. I think it's a one point five thrust to weight ratio. Yeah, it might be right at the yeah right in the pad. I yeah. think it's very close to that. Yeah, because it it looked like, and I have to do the math to find out whether they they really pushed it up to that level. And they they may have, because right. it yeah. jumped so quickly off the pad, um, again so confident, right? Seeing something of that size going on up, and now you're just seeing it burn so cleanly that yeah. all you're going to see is that dot. So it's going to be very hard to actually see this, um, except in the nighttime. Right. Uh, normally, you get a nice contrail or or let's say large orange plume that's coming off of most right. rockets that are burning kerosene. <laughs> right. But this is, is burning, burning so purely, you yeah. would need the contrail to kind of pick it up where it is. And yeah, now I mean, you, you like, see the contrail's over. You it's, can't it's even high. basically see it up here. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's gone. Once you get a certain altitude, the contrails are over because you, you don't so have watch, either. So watch, watch. Okay, so you see yeah. all but three drop off. Hot staging yes. happens uh, right about there. And then, all six engines lit up at the same time. So you saw over there, the other one. Yep. And then they yep. open those things up. They open up in a certain pattern. Which was great to see the no engine and outs then, there. And then you also, of course, see the the uh, booster flip way, way, way horizontal. So it's not trying to yep. kill its vertical speed. It's still rising, yep. but it's kicking over so that it, it goes. You, you will see. So, so both of them. Let, end let up, me go back to let me go back yeah. to before this so people can see this. So watch the watch the engines. They all cut out, and only the center three are still running. When mm -hmm. we get to about 245, 250, and then you get the hot staging, but those engines never stop burning on the booster because it's got to keep the thrust to keep the propellant down. down so this exactly. is very, very complicated. So there we're down to three and then hot stage uh, right about there. Yep. So and enough. Then, and when it gets hot staged and push yeah, it back, flips. it has to have enough thrust yep. to make sure it doesn't go negative G's. Yep. It then lights it back up, which meant everything worked well otherwise if they didn't light up it meant something went wrong with the hot staging right. again they went with all six they lit everything up and what you will see like you say is that it looks like the booster is falling the booster is not really right. falling it's still it's, going up and up and up and up right. it just from that vantage point it looks like it's dropping off right but it will exceed the Carmen line both of them are going to go above the Carmen yeah line. they keep yeah. going up 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 and up, you up. can see that the velocity is still positive it's it's you know it's dropping yep. very quickly but um, yes, but yes, one other so thing you, that was interesting mm -hmm. was that it was actually turned very, very slightly nose down for a minute. So it was almost like it was boosting back, but a little bit of a mm -hmm. downward thrust. Yeah, so right it, there, we went across the Carmen line. So, yep. yep. And and of course, the, the booster is just cooking along. I mean, the booster, the Starship is cooking along. Okay, so it's so. it's shutting down. Now, it's interesting when it shuts down, it, yeah. does, it shuts down asymmetrically. It's yeah. not clear why it did that, whether it was just something with the display or, right. or not. Now, it seemed to be able to hold its it's attitude pretty well there. I mean, right. The only reason for doing that asymmetrically is if you want to somehow change the attitude a little bit. Yeah. But you can do that also with gambling. So I'm not quite sure, but you do <laughs> see a slow shutdown of that. Yeah. And it's weird. done in a particular pattern that maybe that was sort of intentional. I was surprised the whole ring didn't shut down. And then you right. have the, um, the final three go down. Right. So it may and, have been that that's the way they want to do it. One other thing to notice, it's a little hard to tell from here, but look at the locks in CH4. I mean, very low, that is very low. To almost invisible. And notice how much slower the second stage is burning that stuff. 
right, <laughs> it's right. very very much slower because now i don't think entries. they have header tanks um for the booster i think it's just the main no. tanks and that's it right the, um the starship does have header tanks so it would have a, a different set for telling you what the actual locks loads are in there right and uh, the propellant loads since it has two tanks but now you you have very little bit but you don't need that much and part right. of the reason you do need that much is surprisingly they do not do a re-entry burn i, I was expecting a re-entry burn but they don't and it's probably because they just barely go above the atmosphere they don't uh, i think the falcon 9 goes up much higher and something that ozan pointed out the other thing uh the skin's not made out of aluminum it's stainless steel yes so yes. that means it can handle the the higher loads uh, on that and it may just be coming down a little bit slower it's possible also the grid fins and everything else that they can use you see it's also coming down at a little bit of an angle that will help right. generate a little bit of drag and a little bit of lift to slow it right so i think its speeds when it's coming through doesn't get that incredibly high it you know it, it'll start to then drop off on its own even before they start to light up yeah so, watch watch the the speed of the left one where it's like 1800 right now 1900 yeah, i think it might get as close as high as 3000 and then it, yeah. might, it might, might start to drop off so we're now getting right. the thicker part of the atmosphere because we're, we're below the carmen line and so i think you can see it slowly going up but not as rapidly as it was before right, right. but you don't see any heating on the grid fins i was you know wondering whether we would see anything like that yeah, you don't know. I think that it's happening. it's also worth pointing out here that look at the right hand one. The starship is rock solid and not rotating. We're mm -hmm. gonna we're gonna note this for later because it does right. not do that after it cuts off. <laughs> yes, right so now everything is going well, and then something kind of yeah. goes wrong later. Yeah, now at this point, it's it's going up, and then let's see. I don't think it hits four thousand, three thousand something. We'll see what the yeah. final velocity. Well, you is can here. see it's definitely atmosphere because there's stuff passing by it, like pieces of engine yep. and whatnot are flying up yep. there. So. Yeah, it could be um, still chunks of ice that are coming off. Yeah. Ooh, still could. It's getting still pretty going. fast, though. Still going. <laughs> there it goes. You can see the grid fins beginning to kick Grid in. fins are starting to bite. They're starting to move around. Yeah. And does it just... Okay, so it does peak over 4,000. Yeah. It's pretty fast. I mean, that thing's coming in at a yep. good, good clip. And, of course, uh, the Starship is going to eventually get to 26,000 plus kilometers an hour, which is full orbital velocity for those who are asking. Yes, yes. <laughs> So now it's starting to go down. So yep. at 20 kilometers, it starts getting thick enough that it actually starts reducing. Starts dropping. But yeah. So I think it, it drops pretty well. Yeah. Somewhere around 10 kilometers, I think, is where they tried to light the engines, and it did not work. No, it was <laughs> actually actually at like one kilometer. It was like really no. low, which, which, which is about where late? they actually light it. Yeah, it was really late. Look at that. Look at that going through the clouds. That was beautiful. So it's starting yes. to lose control here. It's obviously you get some problems. Something is going on. Yeah. It, sh it yeah. shouldn't be doing that much. Right. And it's trying to light the engines, but only a couple. And come then, on. yeah. And I think that happens right at like that's one it. kilometer. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so you see, can... it looks like one or two engines lit up. And right. evidently, it rutted at about uh, altitude of 400 meters. Okay. So and that did not that's plow into the ocean, to... which we thought. The that's SpaceX to... website. Oh, SpaceX said to... that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you go to the website, that... so it was not FTS. It just seemed to rud. So it probably had something to do oh. with the startup sequence. Yeah. So okay. Not clear what so... the reason was for that, whether um it was just yeah, the, the heat of return or whether there was some damage to the vehicle during the hot staging right. that then kind of manifest itself in the last well and there's if you look at the locks in ch4 there's very very little left but it should be enough to land it with it's so. yeah it should be enough and there should also be a little bit of margins when it lands yeah. um, but it just starts to light up and then maybe it runs right. right there the other and thing is that Another possibility, if we go back a little ways, is you can see that engine, the like where the engine bell is, it's taking on a lot of heat slash, you know, air <laughs> friction, things like that. So yep. It, yep. it may have damaged the engines. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, yeah. they've never done this before, so they don't know. They're going to learn uh, quite a bit. And, you know, yeah. that was kind of strange to see the grid fins just flailing like that. Right. And just wondering if there was something wrong with one of the other grid fins. So it's possible the hot staging caused damage to one of them. Right. Or um, they exactly may have right. also just, it may just be so big that it's a very different control regime than they're used to with the Falcon. So they may have over, it looked, you know, you remember like when you learned to ride a bike and you would overcompensate and go from one side to the other, to the other. And it, it kind of has that, it had that sort of feeling. Well, it, like it, it, yeah. The other thing with the control systems is, is that you have, uh, you know, all your theory that says how the, what the vehicle dynamics look like. Yeah. You have all these yeah. control parameters and all these assumptions that you make. And you try to right. model it as best you can and make all sorts of guesses. And of course, they have fantastic computer modeling that they should almost get it right. right. But you still have to fly it a few times to find out what those actual parameters are. 
Yeah. And now they're going to look at, it's like, oh, based on this, now we know what the control system parameters are going to be and they'll do it for the next time. Right. Yeah. And it, this was literally the first time that the thing had made it that far. So they just didn't know. Yeah. So I think yeah. It, 26 and something, some change before it cuts off. Yes. Um, yes. Now we see what looks to see. Uh, it's, okay. It's still burning back there. It looks like there might be some venting yeah. or some other control system stuff, but everything looks right. pretty much rock solid. That's the And color. now everything shuts down. And, and if you look over to the right, there's a little bit of locks in CH4 and it burned them evenly, which is really a good sign. Like yes. there's not one of them doesn't have more than the other. So right. like in That's, terms of getting into orbit, this thing did great. In terms yes. of getting back out of orbit, not so good, but yeah. but it got to orbit. So yes. That's pretty so cool. now one of the the first tests they did was the propellant transfer. So I guess they moved some oxygen yeah. from one of the header tanks down to the main tank. And that's right. what they wanted to be able to prove that they could actually do that in microgravity. Right. And now we see it looks like there's a lot of venting. It's not clear if that's just because what they need to do for boil off or right. if that's attitude control. But we do see it's sort of starting to move around here. Yeah, but watch also watch the problem. watch the display. I think you get your your your, uh, your gimbal flip kind of thing. Yeah, it's yeah. Right so there. so it just we're goes, seeing <laughs> that, that, that 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 there. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing with that's a math error. <laughs> yeah. It's the same math error that we noticed in IFT one. Right. Of, um, that is as you're going around. Now the thing is hard to tell is that it may be that that's the direction it is in the horizon, and if it's actually rotating, so right, it could be happening. So what that display is trying to do is show you what this angle is like towards the horizon. Right. And it's just there. And right. there's probably some assumption that you want it to point in the direction of motion. So I right. think it's moving to the right is supposed to be the idea. Yeah. Now, it could be that it's doing this. It's kind of yawing around a little bit. Mm. So at some mm. point, like you're right here, it's like, well, how do I show it on the display? Right. So we're not looking at it this way. So it's not displaying it this way. It's, it's trying to display as if your eye was going around. And then it's like, right. oh, we have to show the mirror like that. And then it might be rotating yep. around a little bit. So what you're trying to display three-dimensional information on a 2D. Right. Desktop. And so <laughs> that's that's why it's a bit inconsistent. So it's probably doing, and that's what it, it seems like it's, it's doing. If you look at it, it feels like yeah. the whole Starship is just kind of rotating around. It's not like it suddenly did this. It's not all of a sudden flipping over. It's just that, okay, we see it here. Once we've got 90 degrees, which way do we show the attitude? Right. Yeah. And so uh, just after cutoff, I just rewound it yeah. because it does. I think you're right. I think it's yawing. And so I think that's what's happening. It, yeah. it may actually be doing that intentionally to kind of put itself butt first before. Uh, but I don't yeah, know. It's, it's kind of, but it seems like it keeps going and going. And. Yeah, I don't know why they wanted to re-enter butt first. You you, you should be right. re-entering, you know, with the nose. That's why the nose yeah. cone is designed the way it is, is to be able right. to withstand the um, the heating force and everything like that. You don't want to put the engines through it. So I would think sure. they would rather have it kind of uh, go forward. And sure. it's not clear if the venting is because they have to maintain the pressure in the tanks, and they may right. be learning something there about yeah. uh, the intelligence pressure system and uh, propellant settling in zero G and what's going on. And, they, and last and, time they, uh, what did they do? They, they didn't reach orbit because they dumped oxygen right before orbital speed and it blew up. So <laughs> yeah, they, evidently there was a, there was a little fire going on in the back. That wasn't yeah. really a big deal until you threw oxygen on it. <laughs> right. And, and, and then, <laughs> do that. And then it, it burned so widely. It looks like it, it ended up destroying some of the uh, control system wiring back there and some right. of the harnessing. And once that got cut off, the FTS says, wait a minute, I've lost complete control right. of the vehicle. And when that happens, it's automatically terminates. Yeah. But that was that was the last flight. That's not this one. So nope, nope. This one worked. It great. seems like it seems like it's spinning around, but it, you just see a lot of venting, and it's not clear. Yeah. And also, you see with some bright lights back there. So you almost wonder, are those just puffs coming out from the cold gas thrusters, or is there something else that's causing that illumination back there? I mean, it kind of looks like puffs, but I'm not sure what the puffs are doing. Yeah, it's it's. That's it's unclear. It doesn't seem like it should be doing that unless they're intentionally venting stuff. But I'm not exactly sure why they would be venting. So, so one thing about the starship, well, it was explained to me by Ozon. So, what's yeah. going on is that uh, you know your tank gets empty, right? So as yep. the fuel goes down, you've got to fill up the, the empty part with something. 
Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to collapse upon itself. So what they do is they fill it up with a hot gas. Normally, that's filled up with helium. And in right. some ways, if you just put helium in there, it would make your life a lot easier because yeah. helium doesn't freeze and it can maintain, you know, really good pressure and it's a lighter gas and everything else. So it would almost be perfect to create the pressure. So you need to keep about six bar in there. That's what they need uh, to, right. to keep the thing from collapsing and to be able to keep the pushing the propellant into the feeder system. But what they decided to do is to fill it actually up. And there's two ways they could do it. They could take um, whatever it is, oxygen or um, or the methane, and they run it through the engines for cooling purposes. So they have to go through and, and do and with the cooling. And then you can loop that back. And now you have a superheated gas and you can put it back in and then fill the top part with like really hot oxygen and the lower part will be liquid oxygen. Right. So that's going to be pressurized. And that's kind of a trick. You're saying, well, let's do this, this stuff that we'd normally be a waste product. Let's move it around. It seems like what they may actually be doing is not putting the, the oxygen in the loop because that's a bit more complicated. They might be right. taking combustion products out of the, um, the power head that they, they use for driving the, the turbo pumps and everything and feeding that back in. Right. And it might be doing it in both systems. So now what that means is that you have exhaust and when you take methane and burn it with oxygen, you get CO2. Right. So the CO2 probably mixed in with some oxygen in there. And now that's your hot gas. And that's right. actually, that hot gas is what they use in the cold gas thrusters. And right. you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> because that, that's actually the reserve that they're using. So, and you have to keep that at a high enough pressure for the cold right. gas thrusters to move. So that's why another reason it has to be at six bar to be able to do yeah. it. And the reason they're doing that and not having COPVs for it and everything is, is because they want to reduce mass. They want to, you know, yeah. reuse as many things as they can. But the downside of putting CO2 in there is that CO2 freezes at a fairly high temperature compared to liquid oxygen. And if you liquid get enough liquid. mixing on that, not only will you get condensation products, you could potentially get ice. And it was the icing that got in the, in the last one that caused right. the problem with the first one. So they've done something to try to separate the two, but you've got to be a bit concerned that if you have a really hot gas up here and something really cold, and so long right. as everything is stationary, you don't have to worry about it. And you can do this at home. You can put ice water in here, and then you can heat this thing up with a blow dryer. Okay, so get it really, really warm in there, and you'll have really nice pressure. And then do that. And as right. soon as you do that, suddenly that hot gas becomes very cold, and it loses pressure. Right now. There's a lot of there's a couple of things that could do that. One, you're just floating in space and it's just going uh, wherever yeah, yeah. it wants to. And you're, you're hoping it's staying together just because uh, usually they like to clump together, but there could be bubbles and everything going around there. The other thing is remember, they just filled this thing with liquid oxygen from up here down there. So suddenly the level right. of this went up a little bit for the, the tank transfer. We don't know if they were able to do it in such a way, because if we did it in a gravitational field, we'd fill it from underneath and that would just kind of slowly fill up. Right. But what if all this stuff is kind of floating around and depending upon how you're filling it, that stuff might just spray out. And when it sprays out, you know, what happens? It's like a garden hose, you know? <laughs> right. So right. You're basically you're doing that, you know, so it's possible they did that. And then suddenly it's chilling. Now the problem is your engines have been cut and right. now you no longer have hot gas coming. So where, where's your source of hot gas? Ooh, we don't have any hot gas. Okay. Right. Right. And so it may be that in, in some ways, but you're also getting a little bit of boil off that's going on yeah. there. So to kind of maintain some of these things, it may be that they had to go into a venting procedure to be right. able to get the control. And it may have been a different kind of venting than they were expected to have. And now, yeah. now that, that gets the changes later when we get the reentry. Right. Then well, when let's, we go in the let's, let's yeah. go to more mid flight. So yeah. let me go to here. This is on uh, SpaceX's website here. So sorry, I don't have the middle part of the flight like recorded as a separate video because I couldn't find it. But here, this is only, uh, whoops, I got to go further in here, sorry. So at this point, you could see though, it was very, very locked in. And, mm -hmm. uh, but let me kind of jump forward a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and signal, unfortunately, unfortunately probably wait because of, of copyright and stuff like that, we can't play the music I know. Playing at this point, which is, I, know. I mean, if you haven't seen the live stream, you have to, because it was hilarious. We, <laughs> we, we, we joked about it being space elevator music because right. it's definitely sound that way. But after you listen to it for a while, it was kind of catchy and, and uh, something to kind of talk about. It was entertaining. I, I, I liked it. I, you know, in the end, whoever made that decision, it was brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so, so one here, thing I want to make a note of, this is the inside mm -hmm. of the starship, but you can see that it's rotating. 
Um, yes, because the lighting. Yes, so you yeah you can, can see, see the lighting kind of going around it. Yeah, right there. There's like a light that's passing through. Through. So you can tell it's rotating and then they cut back to outside. I think this might be the, about the point that they try to do the opening the door test, but there's, um, yes, yes. See. So they, they have opened it and this and is the, the payload bay doors that are going to be used in connection with what they call the PEZ yeah. dispenser. Right. And that all the starships are basically, or, or, or Starlink satellites eventually that, that will be in there are going to be like PEZs that are just going to be ejected out through this thing. Yeah. So this is the first test <laughs> they can open and close that door. So that's inside the payload, the, yeah, the, the payload right. bay. Sorry, sorry, idea. Scott, what did you say? Open the payload bay? I'm sorry, I can't do that, Scott. Sorry, I can't do that. And it looks like they <laughs> may have had a little bit of problems. Yeah. Uh, it was pointed out, what, by Scott Manley, they probably still had oh, a Manley. lot of atmosphere in there. And it I'm trying been... to find that spot of the flight. I don't know if that was yeah. before. And of well, course, we're seeing here. a lot of ice still breaking off. Right. By here, you can see it is definitely rotating. It's no longer, it should be locked solid to the horizon. It should not be. Yeah. So the horizon keeps changing. So, so basically yeah. at this point it's doing this. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going into barbecue mode. Yeah. Rotisserie. <laughs> it's rotisserie. So it's yawing. Rotisserie and this is where it gets confusing is I think it's doing that and it's yawing at the same time a little right. bit. And that makes everything kind of confusing. So, yeah, it's, uh, again, I, I can't remember exactly where the, internal one but you can definitely something has gone wrong at this point and it's still venting which is pretty yeah. nuts because like yeah. if it did like it looks like there's i can't even tell if that's like some of their uh cold that gas thrusters. That, that's look well to me that looks like uh where they would do dump so i don't think those are actually thrusters there yeah i, I think yeah. that's where they might actually be uh venting uh right. some of their propellant now the, the rotation that we're seeing there i'm not sure if that's just part of that graphic or if that's actually <laughs> Showing yeah. us what's well, going I on. mean, it's really crazy by now. Like, as you notice this, yeah. let me see if I can find. So I, where was the part where it opened the pod bay doors? Uh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> it's somewhere in here, but. So it looks like they're already no... partially open at that point. Yeah, I must have been earlier than that, but I don't see the moment when it happened. Um, Weird. Yeah. Uh, Oh, well, anyway, it, it is interesting. Watch Scott Manley's video. He's got the clip of it. And it's really interesting because there's clearly atmosphere in there. And oh, there was something floating around that just moved around in there. But as it as as the oh, that looks like a pencil. Board? Yeah, yeah. It just went around there. It's like, OK, did someone leave? A <laughs> One of the engineers left a pencil in there and it went to space. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I've, I oh, you can still see it spinning around there. Yeah, it's probably much bigger than a pencil, whatever that thing oh, is. Because yeah, right yeah. now we have no idea what what the sizes are, <laughs> right? Of anything, but <laughs> it could it could be a spanner in the works. You never know. Yep, literally. So, yep. But you can tell from the way that the sunlight is moving that already at 17 minutes, this thing is spinning at a pretty good clip. I mean, that's that's not slow. It's moving around, and and I I I mean, it could be intentional that they wanted to do a rotisserie mode, but I kind of doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so. I mean, you do that just because you want um, even heating, right. but I don't think there's a big problem with that also, right now. Uh, notice that this graphic is showing it spinning here. Yeah, and so. I, but I think that's coincidental <laughs> because they don't have any signal, so they don't know what's going on. It, it's right, just there. Right. Yeah. Now this <laughs> is going to be the new meme for a pause. <laughs> yes, especially when you listen to the music that goes along with it it's great oh speaking of which hold on a sec i need to go back and record that i'm going to screen grab that <laughs> yeah screen grab awaiting acquisition of signal okay so now yeah. we got that for for every time i need to like put one of those in but you can see it is a pretty significant spin going on here um fantastic views by the way we should compliment starlink uh yes. i mean we're on starlink right now talking to, to each other to me but, I mean, that was the most yeah. important important demonstration of this flight is the yeah. fact that they had internet in orbit they yeah demonstrated that it was working not only in orbit we're, we're just going to see when it starts to re-enter we have internet while yeah. the huge ionic cloud is <laughs> like that's yes. impressive yes Ab absolutely impressive. the fact that they could do that um is just remarkable yeah uh, it's just absolutely remarkable and i'm sure they had some other downlinks going on there that they downloaded other really impressive videos as well but yeah absolutely and when we see the re-entry um the re-entry reminds me of a particular movie <laughs> okay you know so let me speaking of which let me uh stop sharing here and go to yep. our re-entry 
So here yes. we go. Uh, nope, wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Now, they were going to try to start up the Raptor in space, uh, but they what? decided not to. They were going to do a test of relighting the Raptor in space. Yes. And I think the reason they didn't do it is they probably didn't have full attitude control. They also said mm -hmm. that uh, if they lit it up, they were going to kind of miss what was the targeted landing spot. It would have right. been outside of the parameters for that. So right. they decided not to do it. And that was basically the fourth thing on the checklist. So they got three of them done. And that was that one there was like, oh, right. okay, we, we're not going to worry about that. How, do you, so the idea was to propellant transfer into the header tank. From, from the header tank to the main tank. tank. So they went from the, the, the main tank, from the header to the, the main oh. tank. Oh, well, they how were that. they, were, gonna, were they going to use the cold gas thrusters as ullage motors then to, to like push everything down? To rest yeah, they, they must. So I think that's what they use for, for ullage at that point. So you would need something to be able okay. to have restart capability. So you right. need to be able well, to push it forward to get the propellant settling. Because right. when you're up there, the, your propellant is sloshing around everywhere. And what you do is you have these little cold gas thrusters that give it a little push, push like that. And when that mm -hmm. happens, the propellant will then drop down. So any right. propellant that's, that's, that's floating around will suddenly just whoo, come down to the bottom. And now you, you'll be sure. And, and you have to run it for a few seconds to make sure you get it down there. You get all the bubbles right. out and then the system starts up. Well, and especially when we look, we can see again that there's not much left. So they, you, you've got to settle it. It's not like it's you got to settle it. Yeah, it's, it's, got, to, it's got to settle. But yeah. um, but the other thing is, if they had lost attitude control, which it's obvious that they have at this point mm -hmm. as we start to watch this, because it is spinning it's it's very go round. maybe that, that you know they just don't have yeah. any cold gas they don't have enough pressure in there and it yeah. may be that yeah. if they tried using it they would then compensate they would um you can see drop the pressure venting. down too much you know they, right. they don't you want the vehicle to collapse here but so yeah. there's definitely something coming out of it it's definitely venting but but yeah but anyway they may not have had enough pressure the the valves might have gotten stuck i mean who knows what could have happened yeah, any, any any number of least. things could have happened. Now, at some point, I'm not sure because I'm not quite seeing the video clearly here. You start, uh, I think it's when the flaps start moving. Yeah. So at some point, they it's start. It's about to 100 kilometers. Flaps. We're at about 127 right now, and about no. 100 is when it, yeah. Oh, but before that, I think they do like a test of the flaps. Yes. And, yes. and when that happens, you begin to see ice chunks break off. Right. And, it, right. and there's some pretty big chunks. And when you look at them, they don't look like ice because they're not white. They're very dark in color. Right. And the reason they're very dark in color is just because they're shaded. So yeah. it really and, does look like they're ice. Yeah. They just by the way, to be I there. believe the camera is like right here. Yes. It's on the end of one of the fins at the front end, yes. which is pretty cool. And, so and you realize that as soon as that camera moves, suddenly yeah. it's like everything gets kind of crazy. And you realize it's the movement of the camera and not that right. the vehicle is doing anything strange. Yeah, exactly. So um Oh gosh, I can't remember how this thing fits together again. <laughs> there we go. I got it back together. Now again, I guess the, the other way to think about this is is the way that this profile was set up. Imagine right now they had completely lost control of the vehicle. They couldn't right. light anything up. They had no coal gas source. It's coming home anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, so, so yeah, we so that basically kind of proved why they went with this mission profile is they wanted to make sure right. they didn't have the, the the largest piece of space junk known to man. <laughs> Right. So, so a couple of things to point out here. Number one, it's going 26,651 kilometers per hour right now. Yeah. That is fast enough to be in orbit. But what they did was they did a highly elliptical. Yes. So it went up over the Indian Ocean, right? I think between uh, India and Australia is where it's it came down. Yeah, it came down. It looks like just off the coast of Australia. So the apogee yeah. may have been over uh, Central Africa and right. then it's starting to come down. Right. And then the, the other thing is you'll notice that as you're exercising those flaps, you start right. to see the chunks come off now. Yeah. So they're, they're starting to get ready for this. And yeah. now there, there they go. Bye bye. <laughs> right. Right. Now, the other yeah. thing is, it's very interesting when you look at the vehicle at this point and we look at the altitude yeah. is look at the altitude when you first start to see the heating. Okay. Yeah. Some other big chunks going off there. And again, right. it's just the lighting that makes them look dark. Yeah. But again, if they are dark the for a reason, it could be because they picked up some beach sand in the wind when they froze. That would right. that would be the only other reason. But this guy, it should be more or less like this. And the fact that it keeps rotating is not a good sign. Like yes. it's it's not and, and it should it should be, yeah. Um they basically was ass over key tea kettle here. And what they yeah. should have is they should have the nose should be going down and not right. that. Uh, so that that seems rather strange that they would have the engines pointed in that direction. You point the yeah. direction, the engines in that direction, just because you want to slow the orbit when you do a burn, and then when you're done, right. you'd want to turn it around. 
So it's well, coming I on mean, down. I mostly mean this motion, the roll motion. Yeah, you're and getting that right, roll motion there as well. Yeah. So it's also positioned wrong and you're getting that rolling. Yeah. And I think <laughs> this is not right yeah, at all. <laughs> like what, 114. So where are yeah. we now? But just watch how, watch that grid fin. It, uh, not the grid fin, the fin starts to glow red yeah, right the around the yep. Like, right. The it's pretty impressive. Yep. It's like that's the Carmen line, and that's when it starts turning red. Exactly, which is really it's it's incredible. Look that at that! Isn't that cool? Line that that happens. Look at, that, yeah. look at that sucker glowing. It's like it just like heats up like a poker. Yep. Really cool. So now but, you know why the 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 Carmen line is at 100 kilometers. Yeah, <laughs> <Is> exactly. It, <laughs> now it gets very hot. Now the thing about it is that the the direction that the plasma is coming from keeps changing and seems a bit odd. Yeah. So it seems like it's spinning around because sometimes it's moving in one direction of the vehicle, other times it's moving uh, back the other way. And the right. other is that you'll see that it seems like wherever the heating is happening, it's not actually happening directly on the heat tiles. It's like right. half on the heat tiles and half on the stainless. Well, I mean, look you at would want to rotate it at that point. So it's if we if we freeze frame this, you can see that there's a lot of heat coming from the left side, and it's yep. it's canted about ninety degrees, which means that the aluminum, uh, the sorry, the steel skin over there is being directly Exposed. heated by this that it's, is not good yes you, you you don't want that so yeah so you at this point they do want to be rotating it so that the heat tiles are the ones that are taking the, the thermal yeah. loading <laughs> now when you're doing that not only are you softening the stainless steel now right. you're heating up the, the um the, yeah. the cold gas that's supposed to be in there and it may be over pressurizing Ooh. the vehicle so there's a lot of things that are going on there and now this is impressive is that we're still getting, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, we're going to lose yeah. the signal now because yeah. once you get the plasma, you get lost of signal instantly. And what's amazing is that it keeps coming through. Yeah, so it's, You get it's a little incredible. bit of loss of the signal, but then it seems to come back through. Um, part of it that. might be that they're finally able to rotate it in a position that the antenna right. are, are not directly in the plasma. So they're able to find some satellites that are above them. Whereas if they try going below, they're going through the plasma and that won't happen. Right. Uh, yeah. And this also, thing is so yeah. big that it actually punches a hole in the plasma. So, yeah. you know, compared to the Apollo spacecraft, which was tiny, tiny, tiny. But look at that. And uh, so notice that it also has not really slowed down. It's it is still it's not slowing down at all. Okay. Yeah. Which is really interesting. It's like, hmm, yeah, it's losing now altitude, it's to, but it's not it's bleeding off the speed yet. Now, yeah. But, it starts yeah. a little bit, but then we don't get down very far. We get down to what I think about 24, 25,000. And that's when yeah. uh, it cuts off. Right. Somewhere around 65 yeah. kilometers is where the, act, the signal lose, yeah. goes out. Now, now at that point, they, they were not concerned. They had not thought they'd lost the vehicle. They thought it was just a loss of signal. Right. But more than right. likely, uh, that, was, that was the moment that the, the vehicle rutted. It, it wasn't yeah. like a couple of minutes later or something like that. Right. Yeah. And as we, I think right before it goes out, I think we get one more view and it's pretty clearly, oh no, I guess it's right about there. So, but you can see somewhere. We're getting uh, some telemetry there. So it may have been yeah. like a legitimate loss of signal and telemetry still coming through. Right. And then but when notice, they lost the telemetry, that's when it's definitely over. Notice the angle of this thing. It's like nose down. <laughs> it's like, it makes no it, sense. It's, it's like kind the, of the, like a dart. Right now, it's yeah. like a dart. It's just finding it has no control authority. So it's basically whatever the uh, most direct way through the atmosphere is, which is probably one of the big reasons it's not slowing down very much. Because yeah. it should be belly first, like, you know, this yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. And, and at this point, we don't even know if that's the correct attitude because we don't oh, know no. how trustworthy the telemetry is. Yeah, that's true. That's true, too. Yeah. But uh, I think they lose it right about there and it keeps going to like 65 and then it cuts out. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awaiting acquisition yeah. of signal. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we don't get much of anything after that, but it does, obviously it's slowing down a little bit, but, oh, and I look, the attitude actually went back up again. So we got, we got a little bit of signal there. There's something and, oh, whoa. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's just, it's all over the place in terms mm -hmm. of like it's And attitude. again, that was probably it's spinning. So yeah. you had this attitude here. And then it probably just spun around and that's why it, yeah. it looks like it's that. So it's yeah. doing this. And then once it has to decide to update the graphics, so they, because that's not right. a projection. They're not projecting what the, the angle is. There's kind of showing the angle either in one half or the other half. Yeah. But, but it, it's, you know, whatever it's doing, it's, it's having issues. Let's just yeah. say and somewhere around 65 is when it cuts out. Yeah. Uh, but I think at this point we see the velocity is dropping and then that's it. Yeah. 
and that's it. 20, so around 65 kilometers, around 25,000. So it really did not slow down very much. It was, uh, it was, you know, it was absolutely stunning to watch, but <laughs> I mean, this was, these were beautiful views, but the fact that it was going ass over tea kettle, kind of mm -hmm. flipping around, rotating, none of those things were very good. Um, yeah. but I mean, we don't want to like make any, this, every one of the launches, like the first one got off the launch pad and it didn't blow up until it got pretty far away, you know? So it did almost the entire booster burn. Second one actually got the stage hot staging, got almost to orbit, and then they made a mistake and blew up the, the Starship. And then this one, as far as launching, it launched fine. It, obviously, after it got into mm -hmm. orbit, there were problems that developed. But um, yeah, but yeah now, I mean, if, if you look at it on the metric of a purely expendable vehicle, it's, it's like 100% yeah. success. It did everything that was supposed to. Yeah, um, it didn't go into orbit because it wasn't supposed to, but it could have if, if it wanted to. The only question right. is whether they had the restart capability to truly circularize the orbit or put it into an orbit that you could have done a payload deploy right. and then potentially just burned it up in the atmosphere, which is the way most rockets do. It's like you got a right. second stage, it goes up there, does a little bit. When it's done, it's used up and done. Um, right. Just about every first stage ends up in the ocean somewhere. Right. So just because it ended up in you know in, in the Gulf, and evidently. Because it rutted 400 meters above the ground, one of the headlines in the news was SpaceX rocket explodes. That's 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 the that's the news. Like wow. So now everyone gets the impression it must have blown up on the pad. It must have been a big destruction. It's like, no, it's they once again <laughs> forget that. Um, and I think SpaceX on their site they talk about rapid iterative design. Okay, right. So there's right. rid and there's rud. So this is part <laughs> of their rid. They're doing a rid process. To get to rid the rud. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So just FYI, in case people don't believe you, um, here we go. Sorry about the ad over here. <laughs> Can't make it go away. But SpaceX Starship rocket launch ends in midair explosion minutes after launch. So uh, yeah, midair. Okay, midair. Four hundred meters off the ground is a mid -air yeah. Explosion. I know. Really. Also, that seems like a pretty that seems like a pretty cheesy uh, way to and advertise that. <laughs> yes, and that's CBS News. Okay. Yeah, I, it's like, come on, guys, that's not really. But you know, that, that, that's the unfortunate headline. So as yes, you could see, from you know, watching, you know, Walter Cronkite is is spinning in his grave. Yeah, exactly. It's you know, like, come there on. Were plenty of rockets that were exploding in the sixties, and they all understood what it was about. That right. that's the only way you push technology. Yeah. Like John, you just came back from Whistler, right? When you learned yep. to ski, did you ever yep. fall? Oh, never. I've never fallen in my entire life. <laughs> yes. Now, <laughs> I haven't gone the thing is, yeah. Kettle. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, the only way you become an expert skier right. is by falling on the way. If you never yeah. fall, you will remain, like me, an average skier, an intermediate <laughs> skier. Okay? So I can go on these ski holidays, and I can ski for a week and never fall down, yet I'm just kind yeah. of doing it at a putsy level. So right. if you want to get up to that level, you need to fall down. You need to skin your knees. You but, need to do that a lot. Yeah. And this, it seems to be, this is a problem with the entire generation that we don't want our kids to fall down and skin their knees while riding the bicycle. I know. That's part of growing yeah. up. Yeah. Failure is, is, is what leads to success. You will never succeed yeah. if you don't know how to fail and if yep. you don't know how to do the acceptance. So this is very important in the process. And it kind of pains me to see that this is the mentality that's seeping in is that everything right. has to be perfect right from the beginning. Everything yeah. can be perfect from the beginning if you're willing to wait decades. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Artemis, yeah, it finally got off the pad without blowing up, but it was like well over a decade behind. And where's right. the next one? And yeah. how much did that thing yeah. cost? You know, uh, I think that the what launch they, tower it's, itself it's, is a billion dollars. Four, like, excuse me, a billion yeah. dollars just for the, the launch tower. <laughs> I think the launch, every launch is $4 billion. I believe that's what the yeah, cost is. Yeah. 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 And it's going to be about every two years that they're yeah, able to do it. Yeah. They can't afford it. And yeah. so it's like, Oh, great. And then, and then it, nothing had better go wrong on one of those launches yeah. because yeah. then if something goes wrong, then the program is, is scrubbed right there. And that shows you that the built-in problem with the system is that right. failure is no option. I mean, if failure right. happens end the program, you, you won't continue ahead. So you need yeah. to be able to design something to have a certain amount of resiliency. So our space program right now is extremely brittle, no doubt about yeah. it. Anything yes. goes wrong, that's it. Yeah.
And 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 thank goodness for Star, thank goodness for SpaceX. And by the way, it's Pi Day today. I know I'll probably release. Oh, this I tomorrow, keep on forgetting. I should have had happy, a Pi. So happy birthday to SpaceX because they're I think twenty two years old. I believe it was two thousand two. Twenty two. Yep. Twenty two. And I have to, you know for the uh, okay you, you you can say Happy Pi Day. I have to say Happy Half Tau Day. Okay. <laughs> Which is is that Elon's birthday? Is he born on Tau Day? Is that right? Yeah, he is. But remember yeah, Tau. Yeah, yeah. Remember. Okay, sorry. Pi is half is tau over two. Yeah. Okay. Half now, tau day. Because the Taoist out there will be very upset if I say tau is equal to two pi. Okay. So basically pi is defined from tau. It's not the other That's way right. around. Because many of them feel that that is the actual natural way of the description of a circle is we should be using two pi. Right. <laughs> there we go. Uh, In celebration. There we go. Happy half tau day. <laughs> so, yep. Happy yeah. half tau day. Yeah. <laughs> This is, I remember, I honestly remember seeing this picture somewhere I in 2002 too. and going, who are these idiots who are going to try to launch a spaceship? These these guys are going to launch a spaceship? Yeah. <laughs> and Elon when he didn't have hair. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Less people think that it's there. So, uh, so yeah, that was, uh, boy, a lot younger back then. All of us were. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so congratulations to SpaceX. It, I, I it didn't explode. I mean, okay, fine. It, it didn't quite make it down. The engines didn't relight, but that really it didn't quite crazy. auger in. Yes. Yeah. And, and, but it was pretty close. Yeah. You know, if they if they wanted to, if they wanted to make sure to keep CBS happy that they didn't want to have it exploded in midair, they could have decided, well, don't light the engines. Yeah, exactly. It might blow up. It we'll get a bad headline. But if we just let it <laughs> auger in like every other expendable rocket, they won't have exactly. anything to write about. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the 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 Starship did amazingly. I mean, I don't I don't know exactly why it was doing the tumbling thing by the time it got done, yeah, but yeah, there's still still some orbit. things that they have to look at. And yeah. now the, the the guess is, uh, you know, when is the next launch? And I think that just comes down to um, their own internal investigation because they have to find out why it rutted because they need to land in the water a few times properly yeah. before they can attempt so, to, to land. Well, the land. So okay. they have to get to the root of that problem. Okay, before before we leave, we, we we each we each have to make a prediction on the day. But the first question is: Is the FAA going to require an investigation of this because the booster, like I mean, everything was successful. It's a mishap. Yeah, it, it's it's technically a mishap. So okay. if, if it had not exploded, then and just gone in, but they weren't able to do the landing burn, they would say that that's all right. That was kind of expected. Yeah, probably the fact that there's a mishap. This okay, we we need to kind of find out why that happened. Right, and get to the root of that, and they're going to want to know anyway. Because it's like, okay, what's going on here? We've we've got to figure it out. So I think it, SpaceX is more concerned about why it did that than actually FAA. Right. And then of course, what's going on up uh, with the reentry? They just have to find out. So once yeah. again, stressing the the payload is data. What the yes. prediction should be yeah. is um, when they decide to actually put a real payload on it. They they mm. could try the next mm. one. Ozan doesn't yeah. think so because he thinks. There's the next one is still going to be a repeat of this until they get it right. So okay. until they know they, oh, can so they won't go raptors, to orbital, they'll keep right, the trajectory very high. If, yeah. if they are really going to do a uh, deployment of a cargo, you have to get it into the right orbit. And this yeah. orbit is too low. So they can't do a low orbit. They're going to have to get yeah. to a higher orbit of at least. Actually, no, I think it's the opposite. I think it was too high. I think they launched it very straight up so that it came because they also up, wanted higher. Yeah, speed but st it still, it still didn't go that high. It, it only went, I think, yeah. what, 160 kilometers per hour. And for Starlink, you'd have to get to at least 250 oh, yeah, kilometers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. still have to get much, much higher. So yeah. they have to get well above the ellipse that they had to then be able to do the deployment so that the satellites are doing something useful. I don't think they need an instantaneous launch window like you would for ISS. They can almost launch anytime they want. Now, right. Usually they're trying to put it in a certain shell, so you'd like to launch at a particular time. But if they have like right. little delays, it's not a big deal. They can go in there and just deploy these satellites to, to get them out and they'll be able to configure themselves the way they want. The thing is getting it up yeah. high enough, you're going to need, well, first they could boost it in a different profile, but before they do that, they have to be confident they can bring it down. You know, is If they cannot relight the, yeah. the Raptor, if they have no way to get the Delta V to bring it down, they're going to be in trouble. So they need to make sure there is some way to return it. And you don't right. want it to rud on your second or third uh, relight. Because no. now you've got a real mess in space. Right. So they're going to be right. confident enough. So the next flight probably will not have a payload. If that goes smoothly and everything goes well, the third flight, they will probably decide we'll risk to do a payload. Yeah. Um, because they can build those satellites 
steep enough that if they end up in the drink or or just explode, it's not like it's a huge loss. It's it's not like right. a billion dollar satellite, which is like usually these Mars yeah. missions. No, like exactly. Really nervous about. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, this, I think the standard Starlink satellites, the one they're launching now, on the order of like a quarter million a piece. Are they really? Yeah, wow. they're they're pretty cheap. You yeah. know, and I, now, I these, wanted to these are this... bigger, and I think they might be in the order. You know, these these are really big ones they want to put up there, yeah. and they can only yeah. do it with Starship. They might only be about a million dollars a piece, and right. it doesn't mean they have to put a whole load in there. They could say, all right. I'm not sure how many can fit in there, whether they can fit 20 or 30 or who knows, probably some ridiculous yeah. number, but it might be, oh, we want to put a couple, test out the, the Pez dispenser and yeah. see how these things actually behave in orbit, you know? Or, I mean, they could, they could put dummy ones in there. They could put just a block that's approximately They could the same put thing. block and they could maybe with one or two that are actually active and maybe they don't yeah. care about it being in full orbit. That's okay. It'll be right. kind of a low earth orbit. It does have its own thrusters. But that I, I, wanted to, to I wanted to make a note itself. here. Yeah, this is why I brought this up. It actually got to 233 kilometers. That's the highest that I saw. So it's pretty high. Oh, I mean, okay. Got, yeah, but, but not circular. Okay, so it did get no. Up that's the high. thing. It, it launched it up yeah. because that was the whole reason they were originally going to land over Kauai, I think, in Hawaii. Yep. But they decided that they um, wanted to. I think they. So they were a little I, bit what steeper I heard was than they wanted steeper because they actually wanted to stress the heat tiles more. Oh, they because clearly the did. Your yeah. angle means you're coming in at a faster speed. So, yeah. so okay, they went up a little bit higher, but at, but at that point, you still the satellites are going to come back down. Oh yeah, yeah. Unless the satellites are able to give themselves enough delta v to right. circularize it. So normally you would you would you would take once once you hit that apogee, you would then give it a delta v burn. Right. That now means you're going to raise your perigee to hopefully raise the perigee up, but now it's circularized. Right. So right. Uh, and then once you do that, you can then go ahead and start to do the deployment. And then you would need another burn to kind of bring it back. Yeah. So potentially and, that's and, what they can do. Yeah. And and in retrospect, of course, obviously a very wise idea that they did not do that because they certainly did not need to uh, have this thing floating around in space or even worse, explode at 200. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you know what? Exactly. If they could explode it at 230 kilometers, some of the pieces would actually end up probably at four or five hundred. You know, that's a lot of right, delta right. Now they may still come down. I've I've kind of well, yeah, they come it, down it, eventually. It may, but... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a question of whether you, know, you never know because everything is sort of random. There could be yeah. a chunk or two that you somehow um put it, you actually put into orbit permanently. You just yeah, you know, exactly. Just happen to do it. Some some of it would just kind of go straight up and then have to come back down. The thing is. Right. You know, when you're coming back down, you just don't know what's going below you when you do it. Right. So right. that's why they the, the decided to be very cautious on this, since yeah. that could create quite a quite a big debris field if something goes wrong. So yeah, so I was thinking that I, they were going to put a payload on the next one, but you're right. I or who was it that said that? But um, no, no, no. no. As, as uh, Ozan doesn't think the next one. He he thinks for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think but they I would think have to wait at least Ozan. one more that yeah. they they do a similar profile to this until they get it nailed. Right. And when they then do that, then they might think, okay, we can go ahead and do it. But yeah. at some point, even though there'd still be like a test phase, it right. may be economically worthwhile to start putting the, the big Starlink satellites up there yeah. just to test that whole system out, even if oh, things are still expendable. So they right. might have expendability for quite a while. Well, so so I could think that I could think that what they might do the next time is put two or three dummy satellites on there to test the Pez display, even if it's in that really high orbit. So they, they yeah, go out and they burn they up could. in the atmosphere or whatever. It doesn't matter. And like I say, maybe, maybe they put one in there and, and maybe it's, it's out there for just a little bit, 45 minutes or, or right. they, they do something to, to get a little yeah. bit, or maybe just last a day or two. And then they could test right. the whole thing out to see, is this, is this hardware actually functioning in the vacuum of space? Right. What kind of yeah. issues are we having with it? Um, yeah, why not? You know, just try one okay. or two of them just to just okay. to test them. So I'll I will predict that they'll at least put some sort of dummy satellites in there for the next one. The FAA and their investigation are going to slow things down. So we went from April to and it was 420 was the first one. What was the second one? It was around Thanksgiving, but I can't recall. Yeah, uh, I, I I would think that um hey, let's go with Tau Day. Oh yeah, let's do Dimitri. that. Why not? So 628. I'm going with Tau Day, 628. Yeah. I like that. That's and, and Elon's birthday is a six twenty eight, right? Isn't that it's six twenty eight? Yeah, it's easy to remember. But I'm I'm just calling it as Tau Day. Just okay. No, no, no. But I'm just like let's yeah. let's go for that. I think that sounds like I like it would, that. It would be reason. That's so it's still April it's going a little bit more than three, three months, months, months out, right? Yeah, it's a little bit more than three months. So it, I I don't think beyond that it could be a little bit sooner. Okay. But let's just say by then would be the next one. And if that goes well, 
then you could be seeing them a lot closer. So right. they have up to nine or something like nine or 10 that they can do this year, as, at least as right. like permits for it right. and what they would like to do. But I mean, there's no way it's like one a month. And I don't yeah. think th this is a minimum two months before next. Even though Elon says the hardware is ready to go, you know, almost immediately after. Well, they have to investigate. They need, they need to investigate, you know, it's, yeah. and it will be more their, them than the FAA. It's, it actually has always been them and not necessarily the FAA. Everyone was yeah. worried about when are we going to get the FAA launch license? FAA doesn't get a launch license till the, the day before they need it. That's, right. That seems to be what's going on. So yeah. I, I don't, I'm not worried that the FAA is not going to give them a launch license when they come up with a date. They'll come up with a date. The FAA will really everything. thing. They said that we're waiting on, on SpaceX to provide us this information and the information comes out there. So it, it's SpaceX doing their internals and, and making sure that they are going to have you know, as close to a perfect launch as possible, realizing at some point you have to say, good enough, we got to try it. Right. Otherwise, we'll never launch. Yeah. So, yeah, as Steve Jobs, uh, a real artist ship or <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, so that's number one prediction. Number two prediction, how is the next launch going to go? They've made significant progress each time. Are they going to be able to soft land the booster in the ocean? And are they going to be able to control the descent to get the Starship back to something i guess soft land in the I, ocean i think so so my understanding is they're not going to do any um propulsive landings of the starship for a while so mm. it's not oh. something they're, they're going to do right away okay. for, for the heavy booster yes so the, the heavy booster i would think then the next time they will they will get that so that should land in, in the ocean okay. okay um and then the question is whether the starship makes it all the way down why they don't want to do a propulsive landing, I'm not sure. Yeah. You know, it seems like if you made it that far, why don't you go ahead and do it? But they're just happy to just go ahead and belly flop and they want right. to do uh, a bunch of, and it might be that is because they really want that thing to smash the self to pieces and sink because they're not planning to retrieve it. And if they do a soft right. landing, then it may be just sitting floating. Oh, out that's there true. Because the booster come is actually landing. Yeah, it's yeah, close to yeah. shore. But then, yeah. then again, they do have an FDS system that I suppose they could use that to make sure the thing sinks. After it lands, eesh. <laughs> yeah, potentially. I mean, you could yeah. still trigger it, and then, but then again, you know, a lot of people might say, "Hey, that's not going to be very nice for the marine life around there." It's a big bomb, yeah. right? You know, right there. So, <laughs> it's. I have a feeling that yeah. So, they should be able to do that. So, they'll the work the kinks out, find out what was going on in orbit, be able to to do that, duplicate this, and if it's a quick accident investigation, it could be as early as one month, but not sooner than that. Yeah, that's yep. you know, at least, yep. but I, I don't think so. I think realistically minimum two months and more yep. than likely will drag out. See, it's been like, the last one was November. So we had December, January, February, March. So we're yeah. right around four months. So the next one may be yep. three months. So that's possible sometime in June. Yep. So, I mean, the first, the first one was seven months between the first launch and the second. The yeah. second was not quite four, I think three and a half, something like that. So two months would be a reasonable, you know, progression of yeah. like faster. If they if they could do it. So two months at a minimum, but you know, there could always be these other delays and the reasons why it takes a little bit yeah. longer. Well, and it depends a lot on what they find. If they discovered that it's like, oh, this is a major problem, like the exogenous, mm -hmm. like uh, major thrusters. design problem, yeah, or something yeah. like that. Or they, they may decide that, you know, this whole exogenous control is it's just not gonna work. They might realize it's, it's just too many weaknesses in the whole system and then suddenly they have to, to redesign it put a bunch of copvs in all over the place yeah maybe yeah. say okay we've got to come up with something like nitrogen or, or like helium you know can what, what can we use as the the pressure it's not as expensive as helium yeah <laughs> not as expensive and that's a problem and but yeah. there's a reason like I say the reason why you want to use helium is that when it comes in contact with uh with the oxygen it is not going to liquefy yeah it and, takes, and, and, and it's, and it's completely not going to freeze. Yeah. It's not going to turn to ice. So you, yeah. you get those two reasons yeah. why it becomes yeah. a, the ideal pressure. And the question yeah. is whether you can find anything else that would work as well. I don't think so. I mean, all those, all those other gases are going to liquefy around the same temperature. Right. Well, but then again, SpaceX with their Starlink satellites is using um, argon instead of uh, <laughs> xenon. So, you know. <laughs> well, you, what you could do is you get really ballsy and say, well, we'll use uh, hydrogen instead. <laughs> Woo. Let's not do that. They've, as long as there's no ignition source, John, there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> it's like a LOX tank. It's like a freaking Hindenburg. Lots, lots of hydrogen. This and just thing so already kind of no looks like a Hindenburg fine. already. 
<laughs> let's let's not encourage that. <laughs> no, there's a reason you use helium. It's, yeah, it's a noble <laughs> gas. It's not reactive. All we need is an incredibly reactive gas that's also impossible to contain in a container. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be perfect. Let's just do that. There's plenty of hydrogen around. No big deal. So, all right, Scott, thank you so much. This was awesome. I had a blast. Hopefully everybody else did. Definitely follow Scott on, on X. You can see going ballistic five right there and like the video, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.